we wanted to come together and just kind of have a discussion. Uh, Chad did a great job of recommending this as opposed to doing a video today. We were just going to have a discussion. I know he's got some questions uh, to get this conversation started, but basically what we wanted to do was uh, talk a lot about having faith over fear in the, the current situation that we're facing as not only a nation, but as a world. I was talking with a friend yesterday. It's almost as if we're in World War III. But the difference is, is that it's an unknown enemy. We don't know where it's coming from. We can't find it, and we don't know how to fight it. And it's not that we are fighting just as the United States. We as a world are currently all battling this together. So one of the things that we wanted to do today was take a time out and kind of talk to you and not minimize things at all, you know, with the reality of how things are, but we wanted to compassionately come and have a conversation and, and, you know, bring things to light that, you know, things are different when you start to focus on your faith and the things that you're doing versus the fear of what's going on around you. And uh, with that, I'll just throw it over to Chad to see, uh, what you were thinking, what kind of thoughts you have. I've got some notes here that I've got written down and know Tay is always going to bring the heat. So we, we're going to have a good, good conversation today. Definitely. Well, first I want to say happy St. Patty's day. It's March 17th. And I, I never forget. See Joel, I got a little green on right here accidentally, but um, <laughs> it's my mom's birthday too. So I can never forget, you know, you know, this holiday. So obviously, um, if we look at the last few March 17th, I'll probably all of our life's March 17th, they're probably been a lot different than, than today. There's a lot changing. Change makes people a little twitchy, right? Um, and so today we just want to talk about, you know, some things that we can do, action steps that we can take, mindset, uh, you know, what are the things that are in our control, out of our control, and, and what can we do about that? So let me just kind of start with you, Tay. Um, I know that, you know, recently you and Carrie, you moved from where you'd lived your whole entire life and, and you moved out there to Florida and you guys are kind of, you know, getting established in that area and newer, newer to the Florida area. But when you think of like all the things in light of that's happening right now, you know, the changes and the stuff that's going on around right now, and you think about this idea of faith and fear, I mean, for me, it's, it's understandable that there's a lot, there's some people that are scared right now. You know, there's people have been sent home from their job. They don't know where uh, money is going to come from. They don't know how that maybe they're going to pay their bills in 60 days or whatever. So what are just some thoughts that you have and maybe uh, some things and, you know, some, some mindset that you and Carrie have to get you through this season we're in right now? Yeah, um, man, I think for me uh, is understanding just uh, go back to past experience. Uh, my faith uh, wasn't born on the mountaintop. Uh, most times my faith has been born when uh, situations that come against me, I find myself in painful situations because it's in those moments where you really have to dig deep uh, and you really have to get honest with yourself about, uh, are you, have you been paying lip service, saying and preaching all the things that's God doing to you and his word? Or are you really going to pay that life service when things really do happen? Are you going to live out the words that you've been preaching? So for me, I think it's been uh, more so in the times when I have to live it out that it's been the toughest. But I've seen uh, myself actually grow uh, and just dig deeper and just really dig in and just really uh, not wavering in my faith. Because that's, uh, that's in the times when it's uh, been the toughest. And uh, it makes sense because you're uncertain of what's next. And I think anytime you're uncertain of what's next, uh, you either panic uh, because you don't know what to do, or if you've been doing the personal development, if you've been working on your mindset, then you're not panicking because you see the bigger picture. Uh, you're not focused on the thing that's right in front of your face because you see down the road. So for us, uh, I think probably the most important thing that we've been doing is staying informed, uh, for one, and just controlling the things that we can control. And probably the best thing that we have done is just start having conversations just having conversations, not just about what's going on in our reality, but also having conversations about uh, what are, what is the scripture talking about with this? Like, what is the Bible saying? What have God said in the past in situations that was, okay, hold on, buddy. 
that was similar to these situations? What did he promise us in those times? And I think for us is having those conversations and really just like looking for the promises that he, he, he gave in those times and actually praying those promises. God, you said this during this time. This is what you want to, what you're going to do. Can we see that happen today? So, uh, okay, buddy. For us, it's just having conversations and uh, just staying informed. Uh, and just, uh, I told her, because uh, there's so much news that's coming out. Okay, hold on, buddy. I told her, like, you have to consider the source of where you're getting your information from. Because you can, it's one thing to be informed. It's another thing to be misinformed. Daddy. So, okay, buddy. So I think you have to be uh, really careful about where you're getting your news from, the source uh, that you're getting it from. And really just uh, have conversations out in the open with the people that you love. And also with people uh, like Joe, uh, once this happened, he sent us a podcast from somebody who we knew was a credible source and somebody who we know like is going to feed us, you know, not just the negative of everything going on, but he's going to open up our eyes to see the bigger picture as well. So uh, just having conversations and really controlling the things that you can control, uh, staying informed and also just going to the Bible when it's time, why you're isolated in your home. God is not just calling us to be isolated from the body. He's calling us back to do the things that he wanted us to do in the first place. Just get back to that secret place. Get back to prayer. Get back to believing and just living out the word that you've been telling people about all this time. So uh, for me, I think it's just exposing uh, exposing your faith, your faith and just pushing you to a deeper level where you're not re re you're not uh, just realize, re you're not counting on everybody else to live out this word for you have to do it for yourself. You have to understand that, you know, your faith isn't going to be credible with somebody else. It's going to be credible for what you believe in the things that uh, you're going through. So uh, just focus on the bigger picture and really just surrounding yourself with the right people who are not going to just feed you the negative and just dump all the garbage on you. But also in this, because uh, it is a reality, they're also going to give you the positive side of things as well. Yeah, it's so good, man. You know, I think we, we listen to John Maxwell so many times on here and, you know, and, and I think one of the things I love that he would say is this too shall pass. So you know, everything's kind of a, or Jim Rohn would say, you know, the same, the same winds fall on us all, the winds of opportunity, the winds of change, the winds of disaster, the winds of, you know, and, and Maxwell would say this too shall pass. So Joel, in, in light of that, you know, obviously this is a point in time that we're in right now. We've gone through things as a nation in the past. We'll go through things as a nation in the future. But right here, when people are waking up today and facing circumstances they're in, what are some things that are on your mind? You know, what are some things that are growing that you've done in the past and that you're doing consistently that's going to grow your faith and keep the fear down to a minimum? Yeah. Um, so for us, you know, me and Steph had this conversation yesterday. We'd we put out a bunch of posts. Uh, we did a couple lives. She went live uh, in her story. We went live in our team page. Uh, we just wanted to get the message out that one, it's okay, but it's not okay to stay in fear and, and be stuck. Um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I was one of those uh, early, early fearful kids. Um, you know, it was one of those things where I uh, couldn't go to bed with the light off. You know, it was just a, a constant thing. And the thing that my mom did was uh, she brought me Second Timothy 1, seven, and had it and she would say it with me. So she would say, you know, for God hath not given us us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But then after that, she'd have me say it back to her and say, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, not just us, but me, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and she would make me repeat that every day, every night until it got into the core of me. So, you know, for you guys to kind of understand where the grounding of my faith came from it probably came from that single moment in time. Um, so for me, and what Steph and I looked at and what we've been telling people is, when we first got into this business, you guys know our story. And for those of you that don't know our story, uh, we had been successful business owners, or we'll, we'll just say professional failures. Uh, we had franchises, uh, we had rental properties, you know, we were doing network marketing, we were doing all the things we thought we needed to do to become successful. And then 
in 2008, guys, the economy collapsed. So we found ourselves standing in food lines. Uh, we were basically bouncing checks from one account to the other so that we could get our business started. You know, these were the things that were our reality then. And uh, this is what is becoming some of the reality now. But what I know since I've been through it before is I can stand here and tell you that it may get bad, but guess what? Look at how we got out on the other end. You're going to get out on the other end too. And the reason why I know that is because we built and did everything that we did in a horrible economy, in a recession. That is what we built our business in. So you have a great opportunity with It Works to share something that most people will be looking for. They may not be looking for it right now. And please, if you're listening to me, be sensitive right now. This isn't a time to just throw opportunity all over everybody but do it in a way that shows that you truly care for them. I'm so glad that somebody truly cared about us enough to say, hey, you should try this. It wasn't someone saying, oh, how are you gonna pay your bills now? You gotta join my team. You know, it, you have to have a compassion for people. And when you have that compassion and that love for people, it gives way to fear. The fear disappears, it dissipates. You know, it, fear and love really have a hard time staying in the same place. So uh, a lot of what I've been talking about lately is just love the people around you, love the people that you come in contact with, let them know how you're feeling and it's okay to feel afraid, but don't stay there. Know that God has you in the palm of his hands and he has all of this happening for a reason. Um, so that, that's kind of why I know is because when I was a kid and I was afraid, I was given a specific scripture to stand on. I've been standing on that for 42 years now and it hasn't changed. You know, do I get stressed about things? Yes. But do I ultimately know that it's going to work for God's good? Absolutely. And guys, when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because he is with you. So make sure that you're taking the time today to go, oh, I understand that I'm in the valley right now, but I'm going to walk through it. And like Chad said, you don't get all of this from being on the mountaintop. You get this through walking through the valley up to the mountaintop. So, you know, this is the time for you to develop as a leader and shine and know that what you're going to do today is you're going to take your influence because every single one of you has influence over somebody and you're going to use that to help them. Because when you take that off of you and put it onto somebody else, you have no time to fear because of the fact that you're too busy helping somebody and making good in somebody else's life take place. Man, I love that. So much of that is so good. And I love that is such a powerful, powerful verse too. And you said that's second Timothy one seven, right? So everybody that's, that's thinking about that can write that down. But basically what I love is that's one verse that just represents truth, you know, and, and, and scripture that we can stand on. So Tay, what is one, like maybe what's a go-to verse for you, you know, as you're going through something like this or, or a verse that is constantly on your mind, that's been really, really helpful to, get, to help you through situations like this? Oh, man. Um, so many. Uh, but the one that probably comes to me the most, I was just reading, it was uh, 1 Thessalonians. And they said, make your life a prayer. Uh, and when I think about that, I think back to um, here, Eli Marshall, a guy who just never wavers in his face. And one time he said on the Zoom, he said, you know, don't just pray. Uh, make your life a prayer. And when I thought about that, I'm like, man, like, don't wait for situations to get bad before you go to God. Like, you should constantly be in God's presence. You should constantly be asking him to help you become better, to help you open up your spiritual eyes so that you can see the things uh, to come. So uh, I think you just have to be, like Joe said, I just think about the story of uh, what his mom gave him. Like, you have to be, your faith has to be grounded in something like that is just so incredible. And uh, what I love about Joe is is not that he just want to get on and inspire us. I just think about when Stephanie was going through everything that she was going through, like I could see him 
just saying like, I do not live in the spirit of fear. Like I can just see him because when everything was happening, he didn't panic. He was calm. You could just even, it wasn't funny, but at the time you would just see him posting her and like he was constantly updating us. He was constantly letting us know step by step, word by word, everything that she's going through and constantly reminding us like we are victorious. Like if I got anything out of anything that she go, I didn't see any of her struggles. All that I saw that they're victorious. Like this will pass for them. They're going to get through this and their testimony is going to draw so many people in, not because of the end result, because they saw the entire process. They saw the pain that she was in. They saw him by her side. They saw everything that they were doing and they were still streaming this message of victorious. So I think in this time you have to do, Mark always say, when you see, we see people going this way, we go this way. So when people are getting laid off from their jobs and they're at home and they can't earn any income, you have to be there to show people. There's another way. You don't have to panic. You don't have to go through this knowing and thinking that, you know, this is the end of all ends. You have to show people we've been doing this for a long time. We have an amazing opportunity, not just going to help you out financially, but it's going to help out <clears throat> you meet your health goals. It's going to help you that you don't have to be away from your kids, that you don't have to be away from your husband. We're going to help you out in so many ways. And I think probably the most important part is when something like this happening, you're going to have a community who's going to come together and pray over you, pray for you, pray with you, and continue to be that light in the world. So for me, uh, I always say it works may not be the best company in the world, but we are the best company for the world because when times get tough, we show up and we show people that, you know, there's another way. We have your back and we're not just all talk. We are about the action. We are helping people change their lives for the better, not just with the products, but we're helping people change their lives spiritually, uh, and faithfully in just so many ways. So for me, it's about just being there for people, like Joe said, being compassionate and just showing people, letting them know like, hey, we're struggling with you, but at the same time, we're not gonna live in this fear. We're gonna feed our faith and continue to trust God and take him at his word and his promises that he's already given us. So uh, that's pretty much uh, what I got. And just another thing, I just wanted to share this quick because I was thinking about it. I think about Sarah Rankin. My wife told me this and just blew my mind. This has been sticking with me ever since she said it. She was uh, giving birth to her son and she said something that was so incredible to me because it was during the time of pain and trial. And she said, uh, your mind can either, your mind has, is so powerful that it can either imprison you or it can empower you. And I think about her, she said this at a time when she was giving birth, probably one of the most painful experiences but most of us guys would never know anything about. And I think about this experience that we're going through now. Like we just see everything that's happening. So we're really gonna be imprisoned by our mind, imprisoned by the fact and all the negativity that the, the, the press and the media is putting out, or we're going to be empowered by our faith and trust and see God that this too shall pass. He's going to bring something good out of what we're going through in this moment. So I just encourage you guys to like your mindset is everything right now in this time. Because this is what it, this is what's going to keep you one step ahead. This is what's going to set you out in front of everybody being the leader and not a follower, just uh, hoping and wishing that you're going to see a way out. You're going to be the one to show the people uh, in your community, show the people in your family, show the people that, you know, watching you every single day. You're going to be the one to show this, that you can get past this and just follow me because I'm going to continue to lead you guys. I'm going to continue to give you my faith until you're able to develop and build your own. So uh, in this time, man, I just I just press in and just continue to take action, continue to feed faith, and just continue to show up for people. Because I think that's what people need right now most. They need a voice who is going to continue to show up with that positivity, continue to show up with scripture, continue to show up to feed uh, their faith. And you can be that person for so many other people. So uh, that's what I had, Chad. So Chad, on here, uh, <laughs> I was just looking in the chat, and, and Jennifer Bland wrote, and I love this, that fear not was mentioned in the Bible 365 times. Wow. What's awesome about that is that's a fear not for every day of the year. That means God covered every day with a fear not. There isn't a single day that goes by without a fear not available for it. So if you just look at the power of what that is, and guys, for those of you that don't have the same belief system as us, that's absolutely okay because this stuff is still applicable. Uh, Chad, talk, talk for a minute about uh, not just faith over fear, but how about just focus over fear? Bas basically, if you're focusing on something, it gets bigger. So the thing that you give your attention to gets bigger. Talk, talk to them a little bit about that. 
Yeah. So interesting. You said that, cause I was just having a thought a few minutes ago that um, when it works became debt free is when most of the world was going into debt or when businesses were downsizing, capsizing, laying off fire, you know, when, when this, when the chaos was happening in 2008, 2009 timeframe, and I don't know the exact date and, and stuff like that, but it's always kind of blown my mind that it works starts in 2001 and they spend that first almost decade to get to that, you know, to, to get their, their foundation developed. And when the economy is going one way, it works as debt free and it's, and it's, it's growing. And I just feel like, and this is good to get to Joel's point. I feel like right now that more than ever people need flexibility in their life. They need options in their life. They need to have some kind of way that they can bring in some kind of income outside of what they're used to the traditional thing. And you know, this could last two weeks. This could last two months. We, we really just don't know right now. Right. So like Joel was saying, focus over fear. When, when we're, when we're not focused, we're, we're more open to, you know, the, the arrows, the darts of the enemy, the influence of what's happening. That's when we get, it's like when you're listening to it, if you're in your car and you're in like scan mode, you know, you're trying to find a radio station, maybe you're not in your state. You guys know what I'm saying? You hit the, the search, the seek button, you sit there and you just, you're open to anything, right? Cause you're like, you don't know what, what radio station to listen to. So you're just tuning in and you're tuning out, you're tuning in, you're tuning out. Well, when you get tuned in, like, like your favorite radio station locally, when you get tuned in and, and say you're listening to worship music or whatever, and there can be chaos happening all over, but you're focused on that and you're focused, you're dialed in and everything is amazing because of what you're focused on. Cause your focus does form your future and what you're focused on does grow. So it makes total sense that if we're focused on the scary things in life, then we're going to become more scared. And we're focused on where we're headed and we're focused on the more of the long term and, and out of the direct circumstances. Sometimes we have to almost like be like an eagle. We have to, because we're almost like a chicken a lot of times, right? We're down here and we're pecking on the ground, trying to get our, get our bills paid, get our, you know, what's happening today, looking in the refrigerator. Oh man, you're down here, only got four rolls of toilet paper left. You're like, ah, four rolls. Oh my gosh, when's the next shipment come in, right? And, and so we're in the now, we're, we're stuck in the mire of our current circumstance. And if we can be like an eagle and we can fly up, we can go, what, what do we want things to look like one year? One year from today, what are things going to look like? They're going to look so much different than they do right this second, right? And so one, one scripture I wanted to share, because this has helped me personally, and this has helped so many people within our organization that I want to share was uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And, and I love the formula here because it's very simple. It's very clear. Again, these, these truths, we put these truths in us when we don't need them, then they automatically come out when we, when we do need them. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7 just says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And I love that because what he's basically saying right here is don't just pray and ask, but already be thankful because you already know if you ask, it's going to happen. I love that. So do not be anxious about anything because there's we don't need to be right we, we become anxious but he's reminding us i mean you can you can read the bible a hundred times you're still gonna have anxiety occasionally you still be stressed like joel said right that's never not going to happen but we can we can manage it a lot better do not be anxious about anything but everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and then here's my favorite part and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in christ jesus and I love that because in my experience in 46 years of life, I've witnessed the peace of God that surpasses all understanding in other people and a few other people. And I've experienced it myself over time and it's, it's available for everyone. And so that's another scripture you guys can just keep right down, whatever, put it on your, put it on the back of your spouse's head. So you see it when he's walking away, you know, whatever. And, and, and just to go to the point of the, uh, that I think uh, Tay was making about Sarah Rankin, man, y'all ladies, I'm glad I'm not a lady because I would not, I would, I would be having a hard time not being anxious about going into labor. So kudos, to, kudos to all you. But so Joel, go back to you to the, to the, um, you know, focus and this kind of thing. What, obviously we want to be smart, 
you know, we don't, we don't want to be the first one to run out of toilet paper, right? We don't know. Oh, it'll be fine. You know, I don't need, I don't need an extra roll or whatever, but we don't want to be crazy too, where we're just scaring ourselves and thinking worst case scenario, right? Cause we have a best case scenario. We have a worst case scenario. So what are some tips or some recommendations that you would make to just help people navigate through what's happening right now? Well, let, let's go back to that super old statement. I had to Google it because I was like, oh, this is so awesome. So uh, Oliver Cromwell in 1834 said, put your trust in God, but keep your powder dry. So basically what he was telling everybody is trust in God, but be prepared. Guys, that doesn't mean that, you know, because you have this amazing faith and you're not fearful that you're going to be reckless. So, you know, take the time to do the necessary things, follow the instructions that come out, you know, make sure that you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your family, but then put the rest in God's hands. <clears throat> you know, you can only do so much then give the rest of it up to God. And I would say this, do that first. Wake up in the morning, give the day to God. I love seeing your dad on here, Chad. First thing that he types in here in the comments says, this is the day. We know that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what may come. So guys, give that up first and then go do the work. For us, you know, not much has changed. I know there's quite a few of you on here <clears throat> that have been full-time work from home people. For us, this is just another day in the office, except for we may not be able to go out to lunch and hang out with our friends. For others that are out there, take the time to invest into them. Reason why I'm saying that is because you have the skills, you have the knowledge of what to do during these times because you've been doing it. Somebody that's just sitting at home, Netflixing out for the next week or two and not doing anything about anything, those are the people that you want to start having the conversations with. Start with those that are the closest around you that you know have been watching you. Be the light for them. Them. You know, you kept your powder dry. Now it's time for you to start sharing the how and why of keeping the powder dry. You know, a lot of us were the guys that were digging the well before we knew we needed the water. Uh, I was telling Stephanie, and I, I told this to our, our team the other day, you know, we're always trying to look for the silver lining and everything, you know, things that are going on right now are, are, are absolutely horrible. And, you know, our prayers go out to everybody that's dealing with this. But what we know is that when things like this happen for generations, it changes. So look at baby boomers, you know, they grew up from their parents who went through the depression, their parents went through the depression and they became savers and hoarders. The baby boomers became the complete opposite. They became <coughs> builders and buyers. They wanted to spend everything that they had. Then you've got us who, you know, went through 9-11. You know, that changed the landscape of everything that we grew up with. And then we went through the housing crash. So what did the housing crash do? The housing crash basically took, um, well, I'm an older adult with ad adult child you guys with your babies may not get this but you know our children are savers they went back to where our grandparents were you know what happened with that is they saw a struggle and what happened in the outcome of that housing bubble was what banking reform that changed everything so what do you see happening with this well this is a health crisis so what we're going to see from this is probably uh, a huge swinging health reform that changes everything as we know going forward. But what I also know is that during the downtime, during the, uh, the bad recession economy, what happens is people start looking for a plan B. 
they realized that their plan A wasn't good enough. When we started this business, we were in <clears throat> uh, one of the highest percentages of unemployment in US history. Is that going to happen again? We don't know. But what I can tell you is that what this is going to do, because everyone, this is completely different than the housing bubble crash, because everyone that has jobs is having to seek something different. I believe that we are going to go away. This is the last time we will ever have a one income bucket economy moving forward because everybody is going to want to have some kind of side hustle because of the fact that there's people with great jobs right now that are sitting at home not getting a check. And if they just, <coughs> excuse me, if they just had a little side hustle going on, they would have a little bit more relief. So what I see happening is you're going to have this huge sweeping health reform, which was absolutely needed because if any of you have ever been stuck in it, like we've been stuck in it with Steph, you know it absolutely needed fixing. But at the same time, people are going to be looking to somebody for direction and help. And you guys that have been on this leadership journey with us, this is the time that you get to step out into your leadership and shine. So, you know, my call to action is just that. It's time for you to step up as the leader and use that influence that you have with people around you that aren't on your team to shine and show people, you know, what you want to do is be the example. You know, as we're going through this, have people scratching their head because of you going, man, I'm crazy, but what do they got going on over there? They look so grounded. People are looking for people that are grounded. You know, people are looking for leadership. You've been going through all of this with us for the last few years, just for this specific moment. It's like your training's done, your training wheels are off. It's time for you to step up and lead. Be the light that causes people to draw to you. Uh, one of the things that I brought up, and, and, and maybe I should have Chad sing it, but I'm not going to sing. Chad's a singer. I'm not. I'm the drummer. No, I'm guitar player, whatever. Uh, Zach Williams has an amazing song, and I, I recommend everybody go listen to it and put it on repeat this whole time. It's called Fear is a Liar. So while I will not sing it, leave that up to Chad. I'm going to go ahead and just read it to you. It says, when he told you you're not good enough, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, that you'll never be enough. Fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath and stop you in your steps, which is what's happening to a lot of people right now. They are stopping in their steps. Fear he is a liar. He will rob you of your rest and steal your happiness. Those are two things that are absolutely happening right now. When he told you you were troubled, you'll forever be alone. When he told you you should run away, that you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty and you should be ashamed. When he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Guys, fear is a liar. He will take your breath. He will stop you in your steps. He will rob you of your rest and he will steal your happiness. If you want all of those things to just go away, take the time to work on your faith. Focus on your faith versus the fear and watch your peace that passes all understanding grow. And I love what Chad said about that because that specific verse, a peace that passes all understanding. I can't explain it to you. I've been, and I know Chad and Tay, we've all been doing our best to try and explain and expound this peace that we have upon you. The problem is, is it passes all of our understanding. So we can't articulate it in the way that we, if we could just reach through this screen and shake every single one of you and go, don't you just know? You just don't know. That's what we're trying to do for you today. And we hope that in some kind of way, 
we've accomplished that. The peace that passes all understanding. We want people to scratch their head when they're looking at you and go, I don't get it, but I want to know more. <clears throat> it gives us the ability not only to share this business and share this opportunity, but also to spread the love of Christ, which is the ultimate, most important thing that we could be doing right now. If all we do is spread love, that will erase people's fear. And that, that's what uh, I've got for today, Chad. Uh, I don't know if you've got anything else for Tay. Yeah, a couple things I wanted to mention, and then we'll let Tay close it out. Um, I guess maybe with an action step or something, but a question, a couple things that you were just talking about, uh, Joel, that got me thinking is number one is what are we spreading? That's something we get to choose, right? What are, what are we going to spread? And I know what I, what I think of, and this is what I would challenge you guys to, to do too. What I want to be known as, right? Is a, is a lighthouse. I want to be known as a lighthouse. I want to be known as what is a lighthouse? So a lighthouse is something that when you see one, you just kind of look at it and go, wow, that's been there forever. That is the last thing that's going to get destroyed because it's right here on the edge of the water. The lighthouses are built like they're, they're, so their foundations are so solid that with the waves come and crash over and into the lighthouse in the middle of a hurricane, tornado, sharknado, whatever, they're not going anywhere. They are stable, they're solid, and what does it represent? It represents uh, safety, right? It represents uh, security when, when someone's out and their boats are out and they're lost at sea and they see that blinking light, all of a sudden they go, oh my gosh, there, there's hope. It represents hope, right? Because now the ships know they had that direction and they're eventually gonna find their way to shore. So when you think about what you're spreading, you know, what, what, what we can spread right now is we can spread hope, we can spread faith, we can spread calm. Like Joel said, we can be the light in the darkness for so many people. I mean, there's a lot of people right now that are, that are in the darkness. They're freaking out, right? They're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. And so we have a boy, we have platforms. We have so, so many of us work on social media. We can go on social media and we can spread calming. We can be calming for people right now. And I think that's going to be so helpful for everyone. So, so Tay, kind of wrapping this up, um, what would you say is some, maybe some action steps, you know, some, some things people can do today that are in their control when they walk. We, we talked about a few, you know, we talked about having a focus on something, right? Uh, everyone here should have their own, their goals and, and where they want to head and those types of things. But what are some action steps that you would rec recommend? Yep. So, uh, me, <clears throat> I believe faith, uh, fear, uh, cannot live in faith. Uh, faith will always drive out fear. Uh, so be so, so busy, so focused on just walking out and feeding your faith that you just do not have the capacity to hold on to any fear, to any doubt, to any negativity. Uh, so today I just challenge you guys, people are at home, people are watching it, watching things, uh, people are listening. Uh, so just be a station that they can turn to and just have hope that you can just be a station that when they turn to your, when, when they turn to your social media platform that you have, that they would just be drawn in and they just will be reminded first of God's word and just second that this too shall pass. Uh, so today I just go live and just talk about people, talk about why you started this business. Cause I think as you get back to the basis of the why, why did you start this business? Then I think you will relate to a lot of people because uh, I don't think nobody uh, joined this business uh, because they just wanted to be, besides Joe, make a million dollars. Uh, <laughs> and he just grew into that. But most people started because they needed something. I think this we're at a time where people are in transitioning and you know, people, life is happening to people. So their why right now has become the forerunner. Their job is no longer the forerunner. Their why of why they need this to work out is the forerunner. So just uh, just go live and just talk to people, be real. Uh, talk about some of the things that you struggle with in the beginning. And just also talk about what this business, what this company has done for you. And I think as you do that, then you will draw people in. You will remind people, not of all the negative things that's going on, but you will remind them that there's, a, there's another way for one and you know, this will pass and I want to come out on the other side of this better than I went in. So uh, just be a station that people 
can turn to and just uh, be filled with hope, joy, and just feel with just a new vision for themselves, a new vision for their family, a new vision for their marriage. Uh, so just go live, talk about why you started this business, just remind people of that. And I think as you do that, uh, people will feel uh, the genuineness that you're putting out and just that authentic, uh, uh, in the authenticity of the message that you're sending out and they will be drawn to you. And I think it will be uh, not them feel like you're just, uh, <clears throat> like Joe said, pushing the opportunity on them is that you're really showing them that there's another way. And I don't have to go through this uh, with that uncertainty of, I don't know what is going to play out, but I can put uh, things in, in my hand and I can control what I can control and I can work from home and I can do these so many things along with my family uh, and, and friends. So uh, I just encourage you guys, like I said, just be a station that when people turn to your social media, they'll just feel what hope, they're just inspired to, you know, uh, see the positive things that's happening and just be willing uh, to take a risk and just invest in themselves and the things that they really want uh, out of life. So good. Joel, Joel, you have any closing thoughts? To and If you could go ahead and wrap this up, man, that'd be awesome. Yeah, easy enough, guys. <clears throat> so fear doesn't have to control you. You control it. It is an emotion. Control the emotion. And the way that you control fear is to focus on something better. Focus on your faith. Focus on your future. Focus on your family. Guys, if you are going to spend the next few weeks in fear and let it control you, you are not going to thrive. You are going to shrink. So look at things that are bigger and start to focus on that. Focus on how you can help those around you. That's the best way to get off of the fear train is to look and focus on helping others. Take this time to focus on everyone else and love, pour out love. Above all things, choose love. Guys, thank you for tuning on with us today. Hopefully we were able to articulate in some form or fashion a peace that passes all understanding. So with that peace, we pass it on to you so that you can take this piece and go pass it on to others. Guys, have a great week. We'll see you back here again in a couple days. We love you guys. See y'all later.